What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Thursday, September 5th, 2024. Let's start the NFL football season tonight as the Ravens and Chiefs will kick off tonight. But before we do, we're going to get into a little bit of podcast. My name is Chris Drummond. Again, I'm a freelance sports reporter based out of Minnesota here. I'm also someone who works in sales as well. Uh, and proprietor of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder, where I bring individuals on to talk about their why of why they do what they do and who they are outside the occupation. My special guest today is Aubrey Aquino. Uh, she is a lifestyle uh, TV host and reporter for the California Farm Bureau Federation, but she has a, a plethora of experience of working as a reporter, anchor, host in various different companies and uh, places throughout the world. Uh, so we're going to get to know her a little bit and talk to her about her why and really have a fun conversation about her journey through the industry. So without any further ado, I introduce to you the talented, the beautiful, the dedicated Aubrey. Okay, thank you for letting me change my background and being patient. No, nice. you're good. You're good. No, no worries. How you doing today? I'm good. I look really orange. I don't know if it's like the positioning of my computer. But you know, uh, you know okay a little bit, but I still can see you. I still can see you pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I close the blinds behind me, let me see. Uh, Thanks. Maybe I'll be so backward now. Okay, that's okay. a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you for hopping on my podcast. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah. I want to ask you how your week is going so far. Oh, my gosh. It's it's flying by. It's already Thursday. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It helps to have that holiday in there. So it definitely helps that week for sure. Um, for sure. I want to I wanna also reiterate to you why I wanted to bring you on here. Uh, before I start peppering you with all these questions, uh, I know uh, now your occupation, if I'm not mistaken, is that you're a, a lifestyle TV host and reporter for the California Farm Bureau Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that you've had that same position and also adding on anchor uh, in many different places as well with other companies as well. So you definitely have um, experience throughout the industry. Uh, I am a journalist. I'm a freelance journalist. I've been doing this for the past six years, combination of Atlanta, Georgia, and now here in Southwest Minnesota. And I love talking to people that are likewise. I love talking to people who are in communications and journalism because everybody has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's story is different, how we come into this industry. And also, it's different for us because we're normally the people that are doing the interviewing. Uh, right. <laughs> we're the people that are asking the questions and not people that are normally answering. So totally. it's a great way to network and a great way to get to know you, Aubrey, and uh, definitely hear about your story. Okay. Sounds good. No, I, I think it's awesome that you're doing this. It's good. It's great. I love it. I love it. Making okay. the initiative and making your own thing. I, I love that. And that's something I wanted to do starting this off. And my first question that I normally do with every guest that I have on here is, what is your why? What why do you why? do what you do? Did you have any role models growing up? Did you have any inspirations maybe growing up? Uh, but what is your why of why you do broadcast journalism? I think the simplest way to put it is that I like being a dot connector. So whether that is just providing factual information or sharing information that I know to be true, um, and then helping connect the dots. So whether that be understanding a story, understanding a situation, understanding a person, or even you know, in my personal life, connecting a friend over here that can help a friend over here, just connecting the dots. Wow, I like that. I really do. Now, was this something that you always wanted to do growing up or did you kind of fall into it? Because I've heard stories from both sides. I wouldn't say I just fell into it. Um, I will say that growing up, you know, I, I enjoy talking and 
you know, the business has changed a lot. So when I was growing up and I grew up in the San Francisco Bay area, so, you know, I was working or not working, living and growing up in an area where the anchors you saw on TV were like, you know, kind of like the local celebrities. And they were people that were there for a long period of time. Sure. Um, and so I saw them as respected figures in the community that were, you know, giving out information that people trusted. And I think um, I just felt like, okay, I could do that. You know, it would be talking, telling stories. I didn't really um, want to be like an actress or an entertainment per se. So I felt like maybe pursuing a role um, as a local TV personality was more suited to, to my goals at the time. Of course, you know, when I, that was a long time ago. And I was like 16, 17 is totally different from where I'm at now. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. I totally understand that. Um, I want to say prior to this next question is that, you know, I, I definitely like to do a little bit of background, a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed some of your videos that I've seen on YouTube, mm -hmm. especially the Father's Day and Mother's Day gift ideas. Those videos. I was like, OK, uh, now I've got some ideas in my mind. When, when those times roll back around, uh, I didn't think about those things like that, because normally, you know, it's it's very tough to get Father's Day and Mother's Day gifts because, you know, you just never know what to surprise them with. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my dad's very just plain. Uh, oh, hey, I, I like cologne. Okay, cool. And my mother okay. likes perfume. So those are the easy type of gifts, but it's really great to so, see those two videos you did. Uh, definitely gave me some ideas for next time. Oh, so and good. obviously, obviously <laughs> the camera enjoys you and really loves you. And I'm, every camera does, obviously. So, yeah, you did a great job. Do a great you. job. Very it's funny well. because those videos, like, so that was in a previous position and we were doing um, gift guides. And so, I mean, honestly, yes, people always ask for ideas, right? People are always looking for ideas, sure. but to give people, everybody's hard to buy for. So yeah, on that, on that end, I was like, okay, well, this could be good content that people appreciate, right? Yes. But on the Absolutely. other hand, and I guess going back to connecting the dots, you know, in my position, um, especially when I was in that job particularly like you know I have a lot of publicists and PR people coming at me like hey you know talk about this product or talk about this you know they're just trying to put things in front of you trying to get some editorial exposure and sure. I was like hey this is an opportunity for me to kind of connect those dots <clears throat> with the publicists or the PR reps um, also show some of my personality and my personal picks mm -hmm. and then also help folks maybe figure out what gifts they want to give based on what I like or what I don't like or what I feel cool found cool. I think a lot of what I do in any of my jobs has always been driven by my own natural curiosities and questions. So fortunately I've been in a position where I have been able to do a lot of my work based on my personal interests and what sparks um, questions and curiosity in myself. I love that. I do. Um, Let's talk about uh, your alma mater. You went to San Jose State University. I did. Uh, and I love going and asking this question because I want to know, were there any other universities that could have persuaded you from going to San Jose State? <laughs> I think I fell into San Jose State, and it was really a great thing that I ended up there. But, you know, I'm born and raised in the Bay Area, originally from San Jose. Mm. And to be really honest... A, my mom was like, I'm not going to pay for an expensive university. And B, I don't want you going far. You know, I'm the oldest. I guess that was her being selfish. And I think both my parents um, originally being from the Philippines and immigrating to the U.S. I mean, sure. I don't think they really understood the college culture here in the U.S. versus like what it was like for them. And so, you know, for lack of them, I guess knowing other ways of doing things. I didn't really have a lot of guidance saying like, we need to go on college tours and fly all over the country and really figure out where's the best place for you to pursue this career path or, you know, where the networking opportunity is going to be the best. I mean, so all those things weren't factors in me deciding where I was going to go. It was kind of like, this is near my home. I have a lot of friends who are going to go here and they have a great program for what I want to study. And it did, it did work. I mean, everything works out the way it's supposed to, but you know, I really did want to go to Southern California and I really wanted to go to like USC. And mm. I often think like if I did do that, my life would be probably drastically different. <laughs> uh, totally. Uh, no question. I think the career path would have, I mean, maybe I'd be doing the same thing, but the opportunities along the way may have been different. But, you know, I'm thankful that 
you know, I, I'm on the path that I'm on and that I've had so many of the opportunities that I have had, um, mm -hmm. you know, we'll never know. We'll never know if I went the other direction and, and had went to school in SoCal, but, you know, I will say, I think also part of it is just the individual, regardless of where you go to school or what you pursue, it's what you make of your education. It's what you make Absolutely. of um, opportunities and it's how resourceful are you? How bad do you want it? So you know, it shapes you, but it, it's not the end all. I love that. I do. And and talking to another California native, which is myself, I'm from South, Southern California. Okay. Um, San Diego, to be exact. Um, I, I always love talking to California natives because, you know, it's so different when we do kind of branch out a little bit and move from the West Coast to like the East Coast because I went from California to Georgia. My mother moved us to Georgia. That's where I graduated college at. Then I came from Georgia to Minnesota. So it's like, oh my gosh, I'm really yeah. going off the path. So it's it's crazy, but it's also good to ask that question because you get a lot of different universities and reasons why people go and do what they do for sure. Um, Aubrey, I want to do some favorite things. So what I want to do is I want to ask you some favorite questions and then I want to get your 411 and you just let me know off the rip what some of your favorite things are. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. Hopefully All right, I can provide. Um, I guess I'll just give you whatever answers come to mind. Sure, please, please do. Okay, favorite meal you like to cook? Favorite meal I like to cook. Well, you know, I actually made um, steak tacos last night and I made them last week too. So I think the uh, carne asada tacos is like, and I guess that's very California of me, <laughs> but I like that. Um, I don't cook a ton because I have two boys that are a little on the picky side and maybe that's my fault too, because now I wish they would eat a much wider range of things, but um, sure, sure. it's not, it's not too exotic in my kitchen, but um, yeah, I do. I'm going to go with the carne asada tacos. I mean, yeah, you just won my heart, Aubrey. You just did. I mean, anybody that's from California knows about carne asada tacos. I came up here actually talking about carne asada fries because mm -hmm. I used to have those back down there too and people looked at me like I was speaking a foreign language so I was like yeah I I'm certainly not back home in Cali anymore for sure so yeah they, they didn't know about that so yeah you won my heart already Aubrey <laughs> with the carne asada fries I mean tacos I are good carne asada <laughs> is good I mean no that's kind of like if you're hungry it's a good go-to I'm trying to tell that up here but but people sleeping on it but it's okay it's all right I, I feel you we're off to a great start here we go favorite concert you've ever attended in life yeah Ooh, that's tough oh wow you know okay so I wouldn't say it's my favorite concert I'm just going to kind of go through like I guess the concerts that come to mind so my first ever concert was with my parents and I was like 12 they took okay. me to the air supply and then you know being my first concert I was like it was just amazing to me we were at the great america amphitheater and it was just like all these people you know dancing and singing so I thought that was such a cool experience. But I guess concerts that I loved, um, when I was in Miami, Rock the Bells would make a stop through Miami. Love Rock the Bells. I'm a, I'm a hip hop head, I guess maybe more of an old school one now because, you know, it's I'm, I'm much older, but, um, you know, love hip hop. So I love Rock the Bells. Um, definitely when I went to see um, Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige when they were touring together, that was another good concert. Oh, That's and nice. I can't, I can't leave out Bruno Mars in Vegas. I would go watch that again. I want to go watch that again. I know he's he has some more dates coming up, so maybe I need to invest in that. Absolutely. Uh, definitely all great concerts. Uh, you mentioned one person that was one of my favorite concerts. That was Jay-Z, but it was the Jay-Z and Kanye uh, mm. that concert, the Watch the Throne Tour. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I know for me, Justin, Justin Timberlake, when he puts on a show, he puts on quite a show. Um, and I'm talking about the 2020 experience, Justin Timberlake, but I followed him all the way know. back. I don't know. Is that the one where they criticized him for coming out looking like a dad? That like, might have been his... Uh, they were like, this is dad, Justin Timberlake. Right. That, that might have been the Say Something uh, CD that he did with uh, Chris Stapleton. That CD that he did. That know, really yeah. wasn't. That really wasn't a great CD. Uh, but the one I'm talking about the one where he did the mirrors, the mirrors concert. Okay. That's the one that I that I thought was pretty good. Uh, but to be honest, you probably my all time favorite concert um is Boys the Men. 
Oh. I'm a huge boy. I'm a huge boys <laughs> to men. New, new I, edition, I, have, I have the perfect person for you. I have a friend who loves boys to men, and she's probably seen their concert upwards of a hundred times. Oh wow! Okay, well, yeah, I would definitely <laughs> vibe. I would definitely vibe with her, Aubrey. No question about it. Yeah, that was that was me right there. Boys to men for sure. Uh, new edition uh, groups like that. Because uh, I'm a huge R&B and hip hop head. When you said rock the bells, I knew exactly what you were talking about. I feel bad that's- now, though, because I, might, I did leave out Beyonce and I didn't go to Coachella. But like, you know, she made that Netflix special. I watched that so many times. It was wow. so good. That's uh, pretty awesome. Gosh, I'm not much of a concert person these days, though. Because, I feel that. You know, I don't, I don't like the crowd, you know. It's like mm-hmm. if I go, I, I, I really want to be the VIP because I just don't want anyone in my space. Absolutely. I, yes, I, that's I the only way to go. Have, if I went to a concert, it would have to be definitely with seats. Right. And like, you know, facilities nearby, food, restroom, you know, oh, yeah. washing, all of that. Um, yeah, nowadays, uh, Aubrey is more group wise than me. I mean, I, I'm not going to be standing on my feet all night. I'm just not yeah. going to be doing that no more. I used to have to do event security. So oh. when I did event security for concerts, I would have to stand on my feet and make sure people didn't bum rush the stage or bum rush the artists or stuff like that. So I'm try to sneak in the back to go to their dressing rooms. Uh, Beyonce was one of the artists that I did event security for. Mm. Uh, and she was amazing. She was absolutely amazing. But there was people that was paying like four or $500 just to stand on the floor all, all night long because this particular concert didn't have any seats mm-hmm. uh, like on the floor. Didn't have any seats on the floor, I should say. I'm well, like, no. I mean, there I is something to be said, right? When you go to some of these concerts that, you know, the energy, the artists, like the, the show is just incredible, sure. right? So yeah. sometimes people want to pay for that experience. And I don't fault them for that because because it's like infectious. Like you feel it. Like, you know, you feel the bass, the music just like reverberating through your body. Um, so I wanted to add a couple things to this concert thing. So I don't really go to a lot of concerts now, but now you've got me thinking like, I have seen a lot of live shows. I have sure. been fortunate because working... Um, as a reporter working in lifestyle and entertainment, especially when I lived in Miami, I got to go to a lot of shows sure. uh, because I was covering them or, or interviewing people. So, so that's kind of nice because I didn't have to deal with the crowd, but then, you know, it's kind of 50, 50 because yeah, I love the music, but then I was there to work. So right. I maybe didn't enjoy it 100% the way I would have, if I went with some of my friends, but I do look back and feel fortunate that I, that I was able to experience a lot of that. And then also um, Justin Timberlake, I did see him perform with NSYNC many, sure. many, many years ago when sure. he was on the Jay Leno show. My my cousin used to work on the Jay Leno show. And so when NSYNC was there, we got to go. And and that was a great, that was a great, well, Justin Timberlake and everybody else concert performance. That's pretty cool. I love yeah. that. I love it. Okay. Now, with all these places that we brought up, great segue mm-hmm. to the next favorite, favorite question, which is favorite place you've ever traveled to? I've ever traveled to, ooh, well, this summer I went to Europe. And I just absolutely um, enjoyed the two, three days I had in Paris. And um, it wasn't my first time there, but I think maybe being there, I traveled solo and they were getting ready for the Olympics. So it was nice to see a lot of the Olympics prep. And then, you know, there is just something about that city that's so beautiful with all the history and natural beauty and the food and just the vibe. So I'm going to go with Paris. Okay. I'm going to go Cabo San Lucas for me. Uh, that, that was quite the trip. Uh, there was just some friends um, having a good time. Um, I'm a huge water, uh, beach, uh, scenery type person. So I love beautiful weather. I love scenery. Obviously, growing up in San Diego, also living in Georgia, uh, I'm not used to cold temperatures. So moving up here, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is something different up here in Minnesota. No question about that in the wintertime. But for vacations, Anything tropical is good. I'm actually going on a cruise next Ooh, month Nice. Uh, with, with my family. Um, uh, my dad set it up. So we're going to uh, Jamaica, uh, Cozumel, uh, Cayman Islands, and Bahamas, which is places I've never been. So um, I'm certainly looking forward to that. Well, I have been to all of those places. <laughs> oh, please tell me about it. Please. Tell me and, what uh, no, no, no. They're all, they're all nice. I mean, the, the Caribbean's great. And again, because I worked in Miami, and mm-hmm. I worked for this awesome show called Deco Drive where, 
you know, kind of anything went. I don't think that show would really work anywhere else but Miami. Um, you know, yeah, I got to do a lot of travel stories and travel to those places. And um, those are all great. But getting back to your Cabo San Lucas um, comment, because I've been there for weddings and vacation. I think yeah. that's a good marriage of like the San Diego vibe and like, you know, kind of with the huge influence of the Mexican and the Latino culture. And then Georgia with like the humid, hot weather. <laughs> yeah, very that kind of makes that kind of makes San Diego and in Georgia, you would get a Cabo. Absolutely. No question about that. Now, you know, I'm a sports person already, so I have to ask you this question. Favorite sports you like to watch on TV, favorite sports you like to attend in person can be the same sport. Oh, it has to be NBA basketball, period. Where? Uh, wh wh why haven't we connected <laughs> earlier in life? What is going on here? <laughs> Man, you're amazing. That is so awesome. <laughs> well, now, let me guess. The Warriors are your favorite team? Oh, of course. Of course, okay. I'm from the Bay Area. And, um, you know, kind of grew up. And they were they were in the struggle. But... Um, Do you remember but, the uh, Run TMC Warriors? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, okay. Chris Mellon, um, Tim Hardo. I mean, just, you know, when we had like Minute Bowl and Shrewness, Marshlonis, and I mean, it was, they were fun to watch where they score a lot of points. And it was like, we'd watch at home, I'd watch with my family. And it was like, are they going to score 120? Because I think at the time they would get like free tacos at Taco Bell. Yeah. And they were losing, you know, everybody just wanted to hit them, whatever that point was, 100 points. And so it was, they were just fun to watch. But obviously, um, then as a mom, I have enjoyed making my children Warriors fans, um, you know, with all the wins that have come in the more recent years. Sure. Absolutely. Obviously, I'm I'm huge on the Lakers growing up in Southern California. But my actual first game, my dad <laughs> actually took me to a Warriors game because he oh. um he was living at the time in Salinas, Salinas, mm -hmm. California. Uh, it was my first time ever going to like a live pro game because most of the games that I went to at that time living in San Diego. We would go to the sports arena and it'd be preseason for the Lakers games, oh, okay. uh, which they would play in San Diego. So it was the first time me ever going to a Golden State uh, Warriors game, and it was just crazy. I mean, the atmosphere was the loudest I've ever heard of an arena. It was just so loud. It was actually the game where they played Yao Ming. Oh, and wow. Yao Ming was playing in Houston. Yeah, yeah, back, back when. So that was one of my first, uh, no, actually my first pro game mm -hmm. of the that I've ever went to for NBA, and I was stuck on going to pros after that. So it was quite the experience. Yeah, no, it's a great, I mean, it is a great, great environment. And, and I kind of like to joke um, because, you know, so I lived in Miami for a number of years when I was working at Deco Drive, and um, I had both of my children in Miami. And I always like to joke that, so I had my kids like back to back. And, sure. and their births coincided with the back to back championship runs of the Miami Heat. Wow. Okay. Um, so often, and then, you know, and then we moved to the Bay area and then look who wins next, you know? So right. I don't know. I don't know if we had some influence there. Uh, you, you might have, I mean, it was a cheat code to have Kevin Durant on the team as well. I mean, I'm not going, I'm not going to lie about that, but you know, the Warriors, I mean, greatest regular season basketball team ever uh, with their record of 73 and nine for sure. So, they're, they're a historic team, for sure. I got to ask, before I get to his last favorite, how do you feel about Clay Thompson leaving the team? Oh, we're devastated. Okay. We're devastated because my my younger son is the ultimate Clay Thompson fan. I mean, like, he has a shrine in his room to Clay Thompson. Okay. And so, um, you know, he's now – I think he'll still like the Warriors, but, um, you know, he's definitely going to be cheering for Clay in Dallas. Is there any chance that you may take your sons to that first matchup that's going to be televised in November in the Bay Area? I'm thinking about it, but we'll just see. I mean, I'm not going to drop probably however much money it's going to. Oh, boy. I, I don't give cost. me line. Don't give yeah. me line to you. I have no idea what that is either. But, I mean, it's going to be hugely televised, obviously. His return back yeah. to the uh, Chase Center in San Francisco now, I believe they play now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last of the favorites. Sure. Favorite restaurant you like sure. to eat at? That I like to eat at, like sit down. Yeah, <laughs> I I love me a good steakhouse. So Ruth's Chris is always good. Ooh, okay, okay. And then in Miami, Prime One Twelve is definitely uh, an all time favorite as well. You ain't never lied on that. I will never forget that restaurant. I haven't been to Miami a lot, but that restaurant I will never forget. Prime One Twelve, no Delicious. question. Delicious. 
I am a sirloin when it comes to uh, steak, ribeye. That's me. Uh, porterhouse, not so much because I can't eat that big old thing by myself. Just can't do it. But what <laughs> kind of steak do you like? Um, gosh, well, I do love my short ribs. But, you know, yeah, I would probably also go with the ribeye. Okay. Okay. I like it. Short okay. Ribs, ribeye, I guess we have a theme there. I love that. Yes, we do. Um, let's talk about what you do now. Uh, like I said, you are, a, um, I would say, lifestyle TV host and reporter for the California Farm Bureau mm -hmm. uh, Federation. Number one, what do you do on a day to day basis? And then number two, how did you get involved with that? OK, well, so, you know, after graduating college with my broadcast journalism degree, I've always pursued this track of working in television. Um, and so I've always worked at different TV stations. And that's also what's kind of propelled my journey to live in different places across the United States, because traditionally that's kind of how you built up your TV career. You don't have to do it that sure. much anymore. But anyways, sure. so that's why I lived, I've lived in, you know, um, Southern Oregon, I've lived in Arizona, I've lived in Southern Virginia, I've lived in Miami, and you know, now I'm back home in the Bay Area and Northern California. But I came to work at the Farm Bureau, the California Farm Bureau, because I was kind of at a point in my career where it's like, gosh, I'm getting older. Um, you know, TV stations, you know, they, they have a reputation. They don't really pay that much. It's when you're doing live TV, you have to be there every day. You know, work-life balance really became much more of a priority for me. And then also obviously mental health, going through COVID and working in a studio every day where I was by myself and just all the protocols are just, I wasn't being able to connect the dots the way I wanted to because I couldn't really connect people. Everything was virtual like we are now, which is fine, but um, it just, you know, I had to question kind of like, what are my goals and what do I want to see myself doing now for the next, you know, 10, 20 years, whatever it may be. And so this position came up with the Farm Bureau. So the Farm Bureau is not a TV station. Farm Bureau is a nonprofit uh, membership organization um, that represents, you know, California farmers and ranchers and, you know, agriculture supporters. But within okay. this organization, they have a marketing communications division, which has different publications and a TV show. So okay. we have an industry newspaper, we have a lifestyle um, print magazine, and then they have a lifestyle TV show. So that being said, I am the executive producer and host of their lifestyle TV show, which is called California Bountiful. So everything I cover on this show is regarding agriculture in some way. It's connected to agriculture, whether that be out on the farms, talking about what they produce, meeting the farmer, telling their family's story, to going to a high-end restaurant with a Michelin-starred chef and seeing how they source locally and how they, you know, how you can enjoy that food from a lifestyle perspective. You know, you go out to eat or even cooking at home. I mean, there's gardening. Um, there's wow. tons of cool ag stories. There was a lady, you know, she does ag-inspired jewelry because she loves cows and she uses cow hides and cow leathers. And I mean, the people are so creative, right? And right. if you really think about it, everything relates back to agriculture. I mean, anybody who wears clothes and eats is a consumer of agriculture. So our, our mission on the show is really to connect consumers to their ag source and understand like, hey, that food didn't just end up at the grocery store. Like there's a whole story behind that, where it came from. And, you know, obviously I think people these days are a lot more aware or wanting to be aware of where does your food come from? Is it organic? Is it you know, how was it raised and all that stuff. So it's, it's really been a great fit for me in terms of, again, being able to use my natural curiosities and things that I care about and kind of share it with a larger audience. And so what happens is since we're not a TV station, we partner with various TV stations and networks that air our show. So we air through all, all throughout California, we air nationally on Dish and Direct TV, and then like everything else, it goes on YouTube. <laughs> I love it. I do. Um, you talked about, you said a lot of great things in there, Aubrey, but you talked about one thing that really struck me that kind of is a great segue, and that's work-life balance and mental health. Mm -hmm. As you, uh, you know, advocated already, you have two boys, uh, you're working full-time, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, when you work, sometimes it's not, at least in TV and, and print journalism, broadcast journalism, our hours are not business-like hours. They're not <laughs> eight to five, they're not nine to six, they're, they're definitely different. I'm in sports. So, you know, sports is nights and weekends. We right. do crazy type of hours. And, you know, it's it gets tough on the mindset because it's, it's hard to find people that's likewise in your position uh, that, you know, you can hang out with or go to. Nobody wants to go to 
bars at one o'clock in the morning or out to eat at one o'clock in the morning when you get off. Okay, that's pretty tough to do. How do you balance your work life balance, knowing that you do have two boys, growing boys, but also you need some me time too. You need some Aubrey time as well, right? Yeah. You have as well, you have family. How do you balance that and also keep your mental health strong? Oh my goodness, it is a daily uh, practice and it has to be a daily choice. Like, for example, this morning, the alarm went off. I wanted to lay there for like 10, 15 minutes and I did. But then I was like, I got to wake up the kids because they've got to get ready for school. And by the time we do that, making lunches, making sure they've got their water bottles. And I'm like, ooh, I should be getting ready for work now. But I usually get a 10 minute workout in in the morning, kind of just to get me going, like a quick little uh, Apple fitness workout. And I had okay. and I was like, you know, on the one hand, I could wait and do something later when I get home or am I going to do it now? And I ch I chose to just get it done. And so um you know, that was me. So that's like me getting in me time. And so I did that and, you know, I made it into work, but, um, you know, I think transitioning into this role with the farm bureau versus working at a TV station, you know, the difference is when I'm at the TV station and your show's at nine o'clock, well, you're live at nine o'clock Monday through Friday. It's not right. something you can save for later. It's not something you can, <laughs> you know, really take a day off. From. I mean, you can, someone can fill in, but for the most part, you know, you're, you need to be there live in my position. Now we, we um, work ahead. So, you know, a big part of my job is producing, setting up segments, um, going on location and filming those segments, getting it edited. And then we usually have everything done about two weeks before it airs. So in that sense, you know, I'm balanced because I can plan things out. What works with my schedule. Sure. If, my if my child has like a game that I know I don't want to miss, I'm not going to plan travel or something right. when that's happening. So that's great. And then also just having, you know, being surrounded with colleagues here that understand like she has kids and, you know, this is what she mm -hmm. does to balance it out and, and get her work done. Um, so it's really just about being organized and being intentional about your choices. Um, I could still be better about making time for myself. My kids also do travel sports. So a lot of our getaways are dictated by where they're going to be traveling or when their game schedules are. So sure. You know, I try sure. to make sure we get some fun in there. And if we do go to say, well, we went to Chicago in the summer for basketball, but, you know, I made sure while we were in Chicago that we connected with our friends that were in Chicago and built in a couple days for fun stuff. So I think that goes along with making the balance. Absolutely. And obviously you do a wonderful job at your job, wonderful job on TV and obviously you're a wonderful mother. Oh. No, I don't think anybody else would say anything different about you uh -huh. on that. For sure. um, but there is burnout. Uh, and, and I want to kind of talk about that a little bit because Aubrey, a lot of the times it's the A side that people see, but they don't really see the B side of this business. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to create this podcast and talk to different journalists and people in other occupations is we love what we do because we're passionate about it, but we also understand that it comes with things. Mm -hmm. Burnout, a lot of colleagues I know uh, from Atlanta and being out here in Southwest Minnesota, connecting through uh, Zooms and, and, you know, social medias that have experienced burnt out and they've left the industry. Mm -hmm. How, have you ever had burnout kind of situations in your life where you've had to take a step back or has it, has you had colleagues that you know that have had burnout? And if so, how, to, how have you dealt with that? For sure. For sure. I mean, I think like you either fall in the category of I was in journalism or TV mm -hmm. and I left because it was, you know, just too much. And maybe they went into, I mean, people have gone into everything from like PR to sales yep. to, you know, marketing, reinvented yeah. themselves completely and gotten degrees in other or, you know, studied in other areas. And then you have the people that like they're in TV and then they try to stay and then they leave and then they come back. Right. <laughs> um, right. I, I definitely have experienced burnout. I think when I had my kids, um, you know, I did take a step back because I wanted to be a very present at home mom when they were young. And so I, I started freelancing. So freelancing has also been a big part of my career, but it's also been kind of like a saving grace because I was yeah. able to continue working and making some money, but also having the flexibility in my schedule to be present for my kids. Even though I wasn't earning like full time money, it was still hustling. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, pick your poison. Um sure. And then, you know, even here, like I mentioned in COVID, it it was really a struggle to accept like things were just so different and the way we were doing things was different. And I had to really question like, is this what I want for my life? And this is where I right. want to be. 
Right. And I did take a step back, um, you know, and consider different moves, maybe because I'm in Sacramento currently. Um, I'm about an hour and a half away from the Bay Area. And I was thinking, do I go back to the Bay Area? You know, maybe I'll take a government job, you know, just. Sure. What, what is what am I going to be able to do using the skills I have still feel good about it and passionate about it and then make it work with my family? So that's one of the reasons I was really thankful for the current role that I'm in because it has given me a lot of control over my schedule and workflow um, and really just being autonomous and being able to put my stamp on things and, and try new things, which has been awesome. But then Absolutely. also, um, man, you know, not feel like I'm neglecting my kids or not there when I want to be there. So um, that makes me really happy to be able to have, be, to be able to do that. Absolutely. Um, I am freelance as well. I was working um, full time here in Minnesota for the past, I would say, few years. I've been here since 22. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, working in Georgia, I was working with various different uh, publications. Mm -hmm. as going to cover games, feature stories, and doing all that. I worked, got my first full time job out here into the business. And prior to that, I was working lottery. I worked lottery for seven years overnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the lottery for seven years. So I got here full time, was great. Uh, but then I started to see some changes. And when I started to see those changes, um, I was like, OK, I was put on. It was a red flag because then people were leaving like all of a sudden, Aubrey. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, out of nowhere. It wasn't like the new job. They were just stepping out and leaving, you know, getting burnt out. And then my boss started saying some things to me that I just thought was serious red flags. So. When he started to say those things to me, and I gotta put, I gotta put a little, uh, I gotta put a little context on this. So I, I was the only African American hired at this company in it, in its entire existence. Oh wow! So no other company they haven't had a black woman. Uh, they haven't had anybody ethnic. Nobody ethnic at this company. Everybody wow. that they've hired has been Caucasian. So. Some of the things that they were saying to me started to feel kind of off and kind of wrong. So I kind of just pulled back and instead of me blowing up and me doing something that I might regret, I had to take a step back and be like, OK, I'm just going to do freelance and I'm not going to be in a toxic situation. Oh, yeah. and, since, and since then, I've had much more peace. <laughs> I've had much more just happiness because I'm able to do what I want to do. I'm able to choose different stuff I want to do. If I want to go cover a game for somebody, I do it. If somebody brings a story to me, I'll write it. And it's just having that flexibility of control, like you said. So I love that. I really do. And this next question does go to advice, though. Okay. What advice? If somebody would come up to you, Aubrey, and they're saying, hey, I want to do what you do, right? Not just for the Farm Bureau or anything, but I want to do what you've done as far as being an anchor or a reporter. What kind of advice would you tell uh, these individuals nowadays? I would tell them... I would first ask them if they're sure. No, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, you know, specifically, you know, I think journalism in general, right. It's so different because with, with the explosion of the internet, you know, you have blogs, you have these digital outlets, but they're not news outlets, but people go there to get their news. And right. so I think right. that's frustrating for me in my position because people are like, you know, the media, this and the media that, and, you know, I am protective of the things that I care about and feel passionate about. So I'm kind of like, you know, in my experience, it, you know, I'm just presenting the story with the facts that I'm given in the interviews I've gotten. So, you know, I guess I would warn anyone like, hey, if you're coming into this industry, you know, really think about what it is you want to do. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily put all my marbles in, in that basket right now because because the industry is, is shrinking. It's not a growing you know, industry because and there, but there's so many ways you can do it and make it your own, whether that's starting your own podcast, starting your own publication, yep. um, you know, doing your own vlog. So I, I would tell someone if that's what they really want to do and they feel passionate about it, find your own niche and kind of work it from that way. And beyond that, you know, make sure your writing skills are to par, make sure yeah. Um, yeah. that you, you know, are very detail oriented. And that, um, you know, you can get used to maybe moving or a certain pace of life. Like you said, you know, there are times when like, you know, I get an email or a text at, at 
you know, when I'm technically not on the clock, but I'm going to answer because it's just the nature of the business where you have, you know, you want to have quick responses. And, you know, if I'm going somewhere tomorrow and I have a shoot and yeah, maybe they contacted me after hours, but if we need to coordinate something, you got to just make yourself available. Sure, it's not absolutely. like, and nothing wrong with these other jobs, but, you know, maybe I have some friends that work in tech and, you know, when they're done, they're done. <laughs> right. Well, you're sick, right. You're sick and you don't have to worry about it. You know, when I get back, when I get back, we'll deal with it. You know, right. you're working in a news environment, maybe you're trying to get to the punch before someone else or, you know, um, with social media, you know, if you're trying to be the first one to post something, you know, time is of the essence. So it is not for the faint of heart. It's not uh, a career path necessarily. If you want to make money, this is not necessarily where you go. Mm -hmm. But if you enjoy meeting people, you're open to new experiences and you can be adaptable to the different things that are coming your way. I can't even imagine how technology is going to shape things for the next 20 years, 10 years, even five years. So just don't put all your, your marbles, all your eggs in one basket. Make sure that you're, um, you know, you're thinking about how your skills can translate in other ways and possibly other paths as well. Absolutely. Great minds think alike. I definitely tell the high schoolers out here that I cover, and sometimes these college kids that I cover, they ask me questions about journalism. And I'm like, guys, you know, I'm, I'm just getting started kind of too. I mean, I'm, I'm in year six of this combination, but I just tell them, don't put your eggs all in one basket. And to be honest, whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Once you find your niche, do it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. I always say, don't half ass it. <laughs> whatever you do. That's in life, though. That's in life in general. I'm not just talking about journalism. I tell them, don't do that in life. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Even if you absolutely fail or suck at it, the only way that you're going to get better is to continue to do it. It's the only yeah, way you're going to get better. And I, you know, just hearing you talk, you know, that, that is kind of a big difference. I think of when I started and how like the business is today, if you will, is that um, I think these days people's individuality and uniqueness is celebrated so much more yep. than um, perhaps when I started, when I started, I felt like I had to fit in this box and like present a certain way, dress a certain way, look a certain way. Maybe there are certain things about like my hobbies that I didn't want to share because I thought they might judge me or it might be a conflict, like a serious news journalist isn't going to do this on the side. Um, right. You know, and, and I, I, I don't really call myself a serious journalist. I mean, I, I understand journalism. I've done journalism, but in more recent years and for the bigger part of my career, I have done like lifestyle entertainment. But that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of telling stories. It's just maybe I'm not covering gloom and doom. But all that right. to say, yeah, right. capitalize on your individualism and your passion and your uniqueness because that's what they look for now. Yep, absolutely. No question about it. I love that answer. Um, We're going to do a little thing that I like to do called this or that. And what that basically means <laughs> is I'm throwing some things out at you and you get to choose this or that. Okay. Are you with me, Aubrey? Yes. All right, here we go. So this first one, all right, we've been vibing this whole interview now. Okay, you you are absolutely amazing to this point, but this could wreck some things. Okay, so here we go. Which restaurant would you choose out of these two, KFC or Popeyes? I like them both, but I do Popeyes too. is a little bit better. No, here we go. That, that listen. Yeah, we good. We starting off good right now. Popeyes is a little I, bit expensive these days. <laughs> they are a little bit expensive. They are. But, you know, sometimes you got to pay to play. Uh, sometimes you got to pay to play. Not all the time, Popeyes. Y'all y'all, prices are getting a little bit ridiculous. But sometimes we'll pay to play. Okay. So we're off to a good start. Do you like chicken wings? Yes. Okay. Which flavor would you choose? Barbecue or lemon pepper? Lemon pepper. Okay. Do you like your wings wet or dry? Dry. Do you like boneless or bone-in wings? Bone-in. You said you said that with a little bit of pause, Aubrey. Are you sure? Well, I like boneless because of mm -hmm. it's easier to eat. Mm -hmm. They're not real wings. Oh, I That's see what, what you I've said. Been told. They're not real wings. They're oh, chicken okay. Tenders. They're chicken tenders, chicken nuggets. Yep. Everybody's been saying that. I totally understand it. I'm with you on the bone-in, though, but I do like it wet because I like to get a little messy with my yeah, wings. I don't like to get messy. I'm like, eh. I feel you. I feel you on that. That's totally fine. Okay. Next question. Which uh, player would you rather choose? Would you rather choose Chris Mullen or Stephen Curry? 
Oh, we're going to have to go with Steph. Mm. Nice. Okay. I mean, nothing okay. against Chris Mullen. I mean, he he's great. I love his like New York swagger and all that, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Steph Curry, I just, I just bought his new graphic novel for my kids. I mean, he's just, how he's amazing. like that guy, how anyone who doesn't like Steph Curry or just respect who he is as a person, like I would have to question your character. No question about that. Uh, I'm with you on that. Which sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? Probably bowling. I don't have a lot of badminton experience. Not that I have a lot of bowling experience, but I have more than my badminton. I was going to ask you, are you a good bowler? I'm decent, you know, recreational, okay. very recreational. Okay. Okay. I'm, you know, I only ask that because, you know, maybe one of these days, you know, might have to, might have to see about that. We might have to see about <laughs> your bowling alley, girl. Keep this the might. bumpers up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I understand. All right, here we go. Which sport would you rather watch on TV? Uh, football or baseball? No, um, I mean, football, I'm, a little, I'm more familiar with football than baseball, but I watch a lot of baseball because my kids play baseball. Um, you know, I just haven't been as much of a football fan as late NFL football fan um, in the past several years. As okay. I before, so uh, I'm indifferent. Okay, so so you so you will go with baseball. I mean, I I just would turn off the TV. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would put on some Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. I get it. I get it. Okay, I like that. By the way, these next four have to do with music concerts. You rather attend? So, which music concert would you rather attend? Of these, then they're all in their prime. Okay. okay. Would you rather see Mary J. Blige or Mariah Carey? I'd say Mary J. Blige. Um, I haven't been to a Mariah Carey concert, though. But Mary J. Blige, like, she just always brings it. So, Okay, I'm with you on that. Uh, which concert would you rather attend? Would you rather go see LL Cool J? Or would you rather go see Run DMC? L O Cool J. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. Which concert would you rather attend? Would you rather go see Whitney Houston or Janet Jackson? Janet Jackson? Oh, okay. Okay. I well, like just, you. Already. You know, I, I have I also have a dance background, so you know, Janet's an awesome dancer. Okay. What genre? What genre did you dance? Oh, I danced in the NFL and the NBA. You did? Wow. Okay. What teams? Um, in the NFL, the Raiders and the Cardinals, and the NBA, the Kings. Okay. Okay. I, I like what I'm hearing. I am like what I'm hearing. That's a long awesome. time ago. It was a different life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's awesome. That's amazing, though. I mean, it, everybody can't say that, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> it, it, for at least for two organizations like the NBA and NFL. Um, mm -hmm. Last of the favorites. Oh, not favorites, but last of this or that of the music ones. Uh, which concert would you rather see? Would you rather go see Brandy or Monica? Monica. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm that. You know what? You're pretty on, uh, on the going out on a limb on that because most people pick Brandy, but I like yeah, Monica. I, I, I actually like will listen. To, I'll put like Monica, the Monica radio station, in on my Spotify. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna use Monica. Brandy station. I'm putting in the Monica station. No, no not nothing against Brandy, Monica. but Monica's more of like. You know, some of her songs about the heartbreak and about, you know, um, mm -hmm. that stuff. I feel her on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, one of the classics of hers is Don't Take It Personal. I mean, that's a right. classic. No question. You know, when um, she told him he should have known better, he should have oh, known better. Oh, oh, boy. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> now that you bring that song up, that's going through my mind right now, for sure. Um, do you like desserts? Oh, my goodness. I have a a sweet tooth, oh, like okay. <laughs> so this is the last this or that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw four desserts out there, four desserts out at you. You got to choose one of these desserts to never eat again. Are you with me? Okay. All right, here we go. First one is cookies. The next one is ice cream. The next one is cake. The last one is candy. Which one are you getting rid of? You'll never eat again. 
well, we're not getting rid of cookies. We're not getting rid of ice cream. Right. I guess we could get rid of cake. Does that okay. include cheesecake? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or we're talking yeah. cake. <laughs> yes. Cheesecake, regular cake, ice cream cake, all that. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess out of those four would have to be cake, but I mean I'm sure I would find a way to still eat it. Um, I totally understand. I, I would get rid of candy myself. Um I mean it's like what kind of candy would I'm talking chocolate candy, sour candy, like what candy? All candy, yeah. But now to me, uh, am I a huge chocolate person? Not so much anymore. I used to be. Uh, I was a huge Kit Kat and Reese's person. Mm -hmm. um, crunch, those little crunch bunches that you get in the movie theaters. I used to eat those a lot. Um, but now, I can't go without my red velvet cake, Aubrey. I can't. My red velvet cake, I need it. <laughs> I, okay. I, I got to have it. Um, and I'm with you on the ice cream and cookies. I'm a huge cookies and cream person. Briars, Oreos, cookies and cream. And I'm huge. Um, on the cookies as well, chocolate chip and double stuffed Oreos. That's me. Yeah, cookies are my weakness. Cookie was the first word I ever said. Not mom Wasn't, and dad? No, dad, dad, or mama. It was cookie. Wow. Cookie, that's my mom. She's like, the first word that I knew for sure you were saying was cookie. So. Oh, wow. Look at you. Okay, well, I like that. I got three more for you before I mm -hmm. let you go up out of here. This next one here, I love asking this question. If you wasn't involved in journalism, right, or broadcasting or anything like that, what career path would you have chosen and why? I used to think I would have wanted to be a teacher. But now that I have kids, I don't think I would have wanted to be a teacher. Um, it, pro it probably still would have been, you know, I think along um, the public relations line. I think it still would have been some kind of communications position. Um. I don't think it would have been like a science or engineering or nursing or medical, probably just like along communications, some type okay. of communications. Could you see yourself being in agriculture since you do things for agriculture? You mean like growing stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a couple plants that are doing really good right now, but <laughs> beyond <laughs> that, I would have to really apply myself a little bit more. Okay. I'm a great consumer of ag agriculture, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I love that. <laughs> I love that. All I, mean, right. I can manage the farm. I don't know if I can keep everything alive. Mm. Um, and you know what? We know our limitations, don't we? We, we know what we need. the distribution or the marketing side. Right, right. And we got to stay in our lanes. That's pretty much it. I feel you on that. I totally do. Um, advice. Again, now, what advice has someone gave you? Has someone gave you that you hold on dearly to? Gosh, there's a lot of good nuggets, but I just think, um, you know, back to, gosh, I, I don't know how old I was at the time, maybe like 21 or 22. And I was kind Ooh. of struggling with some rejection or just kind of, you know, second guessing myself. And I remember I had a good friend. She just said, you know what? The You know, the reason you're in this position and why people picked you and, chose you to do what you're doing is because of who you are and, and what makes you unique and don't, you know, all that outside noise, don't pay attention to it. Just focus on who you are and what makes you unique and right. try not to worry about, you know, the haters or what people are trying to, trying to say to make you second guess yourself. I mean, gosh, self-doubt is so huge. So I think yep. just that advice to just be, strong and convicted in who I am and, and what I want to do and what makes me special. Um, you just have to kind of remind yourself all the time because it's easy to forget who you are and, and what makes you different from everyone else. Absolutely. A lot of people in this business like to emulate others as well. They see what they're doing. They want to be where they are. They think, Oh, I can do that too. Or maybe I should be like that in order to get that. And to find yourself and be original is probably it's, it's a, one of the most difficult things to do in this industry is mm -hmm. finding your voice, finding where you are on TV, finding how, your writing style, just finding your originality uh, mm -hmm. in it all. So I totally understand that. And I, I think to elaborate on your point a little bit, people should know trolls are going to happen. Haters are going to happen at every spot you go um, in communications. 
there's always going to be somebody telling you, well, you know what? I don't think you're this. I don't think you're that. Now, mind you, constructive criticism is fine. Oh, yeah. Totally fine. I am not against that at all. But when you criticize and you don't have any substance behind it, that's where we have a problem. Uh, you got to you got to have some substance behind it. It can't just be a whole bunch of negative stuff. And then, OK, well, how can I how can I get better? How can I do that? And that happened to me a lot in my uh, last stop. I would ask some things how to get better. And my boss just told me, well, we don't have the tools necessary here to help. OK, that was a quote. That was a quote. That was that a quote. Not helpful. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that I point, mean, and if I can just add, and I think this goes for whether in a work setting or in a personal setting, I think if you do things with kindness and good intentions, um, sure. you know, and your heart is in the right place, it's going to work out. You may have to knock on a lot of doors before yeah. one opens or knock on a lot of doors before the right one opens. But, um, you know, if your intentions are good and you're not doing anything wrong and you're just keeping things on the up and up and tuning out that outside noise, sure. you'll be fine. Absolutely. I love it. Um, it's been a pretty dope conversation, Aubrey. I think I've learned oh. a lot about you uh, throughout this whole conversation. Obviously, you need the bumpers to bowl. We've learned <laughs> about that. I just said <laughs> it helps. I didn't say I need it, you know. Oh, that's true. You know what? I appreciate the clarification. I appreciate that. It no helps. problem. I mean, of course it's going to help. I'm not going to get any gutter balls. That's right. That's true. It's going to help. That's for sure. My ball, it doesn't mean my ball's touching the gutters. I mean, okay. The but you did say you was, you said that you was decent in that. And obviously, <laughs> you are an avid sports fan and a terrific uh, person in communications as well. Uh, I would like to ask this final question. Is there anything else you would like to add about yourself before we conclude? Uh, nothing more about myself other than, you know, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just like everyone else out here trying to, trying to live a good life and be happy and, 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 uh, you know, be a good person in my community and, and add something to society. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to kind of share a little bit more about myself. It's been fun. Like you said, I always ask the questions. People aren't necessarily asking me the questions. Right. Absolutely. Oh, this was a no brainer for me. Like I said, when I saw some of the videos on YouTube, see what you do, um, learn now, I learned something new. I didn't even know we had a California, uh, farm bureau, uh, type of federation to where they do lifestyle shows of agriculture. And it's really cool to learn something new of an occupation because it may intrigue somebody to want to investigate into that and look into that. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad you learned something. I learned stuff. You know, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So um, I would like to say thank you once again for coming on to my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. If Once I do touch down again in the SAC area, I would definitely have to hit you up if you're still there because I definitely okay. would like to be in person. Sounds good. But you take care and enjoy the rest of your week, uh, weekend, and uh, we will definitely be in touch. Okay, take care. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.